Hi guys, today we are going to tackle a problem called monsters. So you and some monsters are in a labyrinth. When taking a step to any direction, each monster may simultaneously take one step as well. Your goal is to reach one of the boundary squares without ever sharing a square with the monster. So you have to find out if your goal is possible. If it is, you should print yes and the path. Otherwise, you should print no. That is the question. We're going to break this down. You're going to see a pretty straightforward solution for it, provided you have the necessary prerequisite knowledge. Here are some things you need to know before we start. The first one is breadth first search, BFS. This allows us to compute the shortest path from one node to the other in a graph. Then, once you understand BFS in depth, multi-source BFS is a very simple extension of that. Uh, it's basically saying, um, instead of having a single source, you can have multiple sources and then expand from there. You're going to see how we apply this in the question. Let's take a look at this simple example. Here we have two boundary squares. If you decided to go for this, then you need to take two steps. One and two. Of course, the monster is going to stop in a single step. So this square is not a viable option. Now, if you decide to go for the other square, then you can do that in just three steps. One, two, three. Or you could also go one, two, three. That's the same thing. If the monster wanted to stop you, then it's going to need to take four steps to get to the same boundary square. So that's one, two, three, four. So what this tells us is if we know the minimum steps required to get to all the boundary squares from both the monster and the player. We can compare those and decide if it is possible to escape. Okay, so in this case, we know that it's going to take the monster just one step to get to this square, and it's going to take him four steps to get to this square. But for the player, it's going to take him two steps to get to this, and three steps to get to this. So that makes it possible for the player to escape from this particular square. We are gonna use the efforts to compute these numbers for both monsters and the player, which we are going to compare and, and compute the answer to this question. So this is the example we are giving. And for now, let us just focus on the monsters locations and ignore the player. Um, assuming that every second, the monsters and the player can take one step each. So at time zero, the monsters, the three monsters are in their current position. Now at time one, this monster can move to adjacent squares, so to this and to this. Let's label that. So this is done at time one. This can move to this. So we label that. The same applies to this monster right here. So those are the squares they're going to occupy after one second. After two seconds, the monster, assuming it took this particular route, is going to be able to come to this square right here. Or this could also come here with the same. So after two seconds, we're going to have two, 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 All right? After three seconds, the only square remaining is that can be occupied is this. After four seconds, we're going to have this, then five, six. So basically it's going to take the monsters one step to get to this boundary square and it's going to take them 
six steps to get to the other boundary square. Now let us do the same for the player. So when time is zero, you can see the player's location right here. After one second, he's going to be able to move to the left, down, or right. In other words, he could aim for this boundary square or he could aim for this. Let's see how long both of them is going to take him. So after one second, he's going to be able to move to the adjacent squares right here. After two seconds, we have two, two, two. Okay. After three seconds, we're going to have okay, sorry, two. After three seconds, we're going to have three, three. Three. Let's keep going. Four, four. And after five seconds, he reaches this particular boundary square. And then after six, he's going to reach this boundary square right here. So it's going to take him five moves or steps to get to this boundary square. Well, it's going to take him six steps to get to this boundary square. Let's compare this with what you got for the monster. As you can see, if he, if he wanted to go for this square, a monster is going to stop him for sure. But if you opted for the second square, which is this, since he took the monster six steps while it took him five, he's going to be able to escape. So at this point, we're going to print our result, which is yes, and then print the part he took. Now the question also requires that we keep track of the path and print that at the end of the traversal. So right here we already determined that it is possible to escape, but we need to print the path he took. To do that, for each square you visit as the player, you're going to keep track of the previous square. So let's see what that looks like. So for the first one, which is at point 1,4 right we could just use a dummy value so this could be a hash map or hash table or whatever so they just toss something arbitrary for now then the next step you're going to take is 1,5 so at 1,5, the previous square is going to be 1,4 and you took the right um, the right direction. So you're going to write that and store that too. Okay. So next is 1,6. For 1,6, you have the previous square as 1,5 and you took the right direction. So you're going to keep doing this now for 2,6. You have 1,6 at the previous direction and you took the down direction. I mean, as the previous square, you took the down direction. And for this square right here, 3,6. You took 2,6 as the previous square and the direction is down. And finally for 3,7 you took 3,6 and the direction is right. So when you are done, you could just print the result in this direction so you have right right down down right and of course that's basically what we had in the example so that's how to solve the question um, the time complexity for this so for the first breath force search we're going to do that would take the number of rows times the number of columns. Okay. Okay. So we're going to do another breadth first search. So this is times two. 
but of course we can drop the constant term. So this is the time complexity and the space is actually the same because we're going to need to store some information. For example, uh, we're going to store how long it took to get to individual squares. So that is your space and time complexity analysis. Next, we're going to write the code for this using C++. You should pause the video and try to write the code on your own. That's a very good way to learn. Time for the code. So let us break this down. First, we're going to read the input. Next, just like we explained, we're going to compute how long it took the monsters to get to all the edges in the grid. So we're going to do that here using breakfast search. We're also going to do the same for the player and then compare that with what we computed for the monsters. At the end, if it is possible to escape, we're going to construct the result and print the and print that. Otherwise we just print no. So that is the basic plan. So let us define some variables we're going to need. Now um, there are many ways to solve this and I admit this is a bit long. For example, you could actually combine the two breadfruit search into one and make the code shorter, but I wanted to break things down so that this code is easy to understand. Okay, so we have a couple of things here, like the length of the grid, the starting position for the player. We also have the monsters locations. We have the time it took the monsters to get to the various um, cells in the grid. And also we have these um, directions variable which we're going to use to determine what direction to go to. So you have right, down, left, and up. Okay. Now you have the previous location. This would help us compute the final result at the end. And finally we have the results. At initially we're going to set it to no because we haven't found anything yet. So if you do find that the player is able to escape, we're going to update this, which we're going to see soon. So next, let us read the input. So this just reads the input. Feel free to go through that. We're going to initialize all of this and then read the input as specified in the question. So next, we're going to run a classic breadfruit search. Um, this particular breadfruit search uses what we call multi-source breadfruit search because if you look at what you are doing right here, whenever we see a monster, we're going to add it to this monster's locations. Okay. And then we're going to use that in this breadfruit search to compute how long it took um, the monsters to get to all the edges or basically all the cells that can be visited okay so that is stored in this time monsters um, variable all right let's define a function to help us determine if a particular cell is an edge which we're going to use next So next, we're going to run the same breadfruit search for the player. And this is also a classical breadfruit search algorithm. The only difference here is that if we get to an edge, then we know that it is possible to escape. At this point, we're going to construct the path and return. So this is basically the same thing as this, but we don't need to do some checks because um, if we get to the edge, we can return. Otherwise, the monster got to the edge before us. So 
here we are comparing the time it took the monster to get to any square with the time it took the player to get to that particular square and that's it so let us define this construct part function and we are done it's pretty straightforward um, you have this previous location so for each location you're going to maintain the previous cell it came from and then you're going to use that to construct the final result so you just keep going until you meet where the row is minus one remember we set the minus one for the very first starting position for the player right so once you're done you can then print that out as the answer so let us try this with an example and see what it gives us all right so that is correct we're going to try to submit now So that got accepted. That's it. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.